Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey uh, to YouTube with a, another Q&A session. This half answering the questions that was provided to me when I did a call out last week. For those who are new to the concept on this uh, channel or just started following me, uh, how we normally work this out is I upload a very short one two minute video asking for uh, hobby related questions, requests for shout outs and other small business uh, matters regarding their channel. You're given about 5-6 days to research, think up and submit a question via the comment section of uh, said video. I uh, do my homework, research and uh, film talking about the answers and sometimes throwing in a few pictures, links and uh, further sources quite a fun way to interact with the channel and uh, you get to see some interesting characters in the hobby and community. Channel welfare wise doing very well on all fronts nothing being uh, demonetized or numbers dropped or any of that sort of uh, nonsense. A lot of videos that are scheduled for release in our backlog of uh, pre-created content past few weeks I've been very busy with work which is usual this time of year and she'll be creating new co content very very shortly uh, those sort of photos and whatnot will be shared on uh, the McConaughey Facebook page I uh, do remember we've got a new study group uh, Facebook group if uh, we want to have uh, long-term uh, conversations and projects and that sort of stuff I will be uh, fielding out uh, for the Gunpla Builders uh, World Cup rules and uh, scheduling information very very shortly for an upcoming video we'll get into that now I have uh, received an anonymous uh, request and information that there is a uh, talk regarding rule changes with the Gunpla Builders World Cup 2018 competition with uh, heats and some competition starting as early as March having a look at uh, the uh, Bandai Hobbynet uh, website uh, there's a coming soon uh, social media post though everything else is up still regarding results and the original rules for 2017. What uh, this gentleman was uh, suggesting that uh, decals unless uh, provided in the box that you have uh, purchased from Bandai and the kit that you intend to build uh, not included you're not allowed to apply it on the kit so if there's stickers or if it comes with uh, dry transfers uh, that's perfectly fine aftermarket decals are ruled out now doing some very light digging I will be doing a far more comprehensive uh, video in the short term regarding uh, the topic of uh, lack of rules and uh, deadlines uh, leaning in for the competition if you are looking at uh, a heat in the next uh, three months it's probably the time to start building and whatnot uh, rules and outlines have not really been uh, shown uh, one source I did come across uh, on the uh, anime yahai.net slash uh, rules for a Hawaiian uh, anime competition uh, Kauai Con 2018 uh, early March 234 is uh, what is confusingly uh, provided in the rules as a Gunpla Builders World Cup uh, heat for the US as well as uh, their own competition with some uh, unofficial uh, open sections and categories. Now this is all just uh, speculation but uh, the rules and the website is uh, raising some major uh, red flags for me but this is just a case of um, participating and if you happen to be the best of the heat you move on to the more um, finalized uh, American competitions and uh, this event is uh, obviously uh, bypassable by going to the uh, finals though knowingly from what occurred last year that uh, you've got rules from a third party uh, website such as uh, Smash, Hobby Co, Blue Thin and uh, what is up uh, eventually uploaded on the uh, Bandai Hobbynet website uh, these rules are not exactly uh, final and uh, can undo some of the people who are competing entering or uh, designing building a model 
to this uh, set that is uh, provided. Link provided below, of course. Some uh, major red flags that I can compare to an event that uh, pulled this in Australia and it claimed to be an official uh, subheat of the Gunpla Builders World Cup. Uh, wasn't the case, got in trouble and told to uh, pull the information down. Uh, we're met with uh, rules for Gunpla Hawaii Build Off, not necessarily a uh, competition or uh, World Cup. And uh, some of a uh, bit of the changes of rules that I've noticed from 2017. Use of complete resin conversion or full resin kits are prohibited. Where use of resin parts were okay, but said nothing about a full model. Resin as a material may still be used for parts and casting and all that sort of stuff. Any custom parts must be scratch built or of licensed brands. Example, Kodabakir, Wave etc and that is now the whole custom third-party decals are completely banned I can uh, understand where uh, Bandai is saying no third-party uh, parts unless uh, branded I'm not too sure why they would uh, comment on brands that are not their own builder parts uh, series such as uh, Wave and Kodabakia Though this is just a sign of uh, outside uh, decals by any uh, third party or just mash from other kits is uh, potentially unwelcomed and is uh, going to be uh, harshly uh, judged upon to the point of uh, being uh, disqualified altogether without uh, notice to the builder unless uh, requesting feedback from uh, the judges and whatnot, especially if it's done at the Hashiti that uh, the Japanese judges and uh, Mr. Kawaguchi stand fast, uh, harsh process of elimination take on uh, judging and uh, placing kits to uh, win or be fully judged for consideration of placing. Uh, does this mean that the official uh, Bandai aftermarket decals are allowed or stickers or anything else? I'm not too sure. Uh, a lot of this is uh, speculation uh, based off this uh, line that I have found. I will do uh, further research, ask around, do something in the study group and see what can be dug up and present something more solid in a week or two's uh, time. But from my point of view of uh, how this is written out, Bandai is looking for something that's closer to the out of the box look and from other wordings written in the rule set which you can have a look they're after something that's very Gundam-y uh, from the Gundam universe uh, portrayed either off box art, anime uh, anything that is uh, very popular and immediately recognizable by uh, the casual fan and that can again be slapped on a magazine cover or um, draw attention other notes of uh, interests and areas that I do have uh, complaint or uh, confusion from. Uh, model can be uh, entered in diorama, uh, however maximum dimensions of uh, any entry may not exceed 15 by 15 by 18 uh, inches, uh, length, width, height. That is pretty much the standard uh, glass cube on the intersection of an IKEA display cabinet. Uh, last year, the Gunpla Builders World Cup uh, rules was uh, 500 by 500 by 500 uh, millimeters. Uh, this is cutting out approximately uh, 20 centimeters length and width and about 10 centimeters height overall from uh, what can be uh, presented. Another point, all contestants will be automatically entered in all categories unless kit does not meet uh, specifications. Uh, Gunpla Builders World Cup has uh, four categories, uh, two under 18, two uh, open. Uh, two out of the two subclasses are deemed um, eligible to go to Japan, where the other two are not so. So you've got your young adults uh, get a nice price, uh, the older adults, uh, the uh, open category, and you get the uh, younger junior and the slightly older junior. I think it's, they just assume you're in all of those and depending on uh, your age and uh, whatnot of your build, where it's a process of elimination you can't be quite into. 
very strangely uh, word and unnecessary. It could have just uh, listed uh, the different categories and restrictions, unless not on hand. I.e., if uh, kit diorama exceeds dimensions, so does that mean larger models are allowed? A kit cannot be entered in official Gunpla Builders World Cup. All right, that's uh, interesting. That's definitely a change on the dimensions from uh, many, many uh, years. But will still be uh, entered in other categories. I assume uh, there are other ones. It's not GBWC. Uh, contestants cannot win more than two categories. Categories are as uh, followed. And uh, that does my head in. There's some open ones and whatnot that has to do with the local club community and con. And uh, obviously your four age restricted categories are for the GBWC. So it's probably saying that you put your model out and you can win awards from uh, the local uh, categories as well as uh, the official one, if it is as uh, stated. Very, very uh, confusing, especially for the beginner entering their first competition. Uh, further, model kits entered not in the open category, uh, must be, uh, in all capitals, of 90% Bandai uh, constructed. So you can have a little bit kit bash from other kits and scratch building material and uh, putty and uh, whatnot, but they want it uh, completely uh, Gundam, looking as Gundam, uh, the whole mentality of uh, magazine uh, cover, what can they market. Strict inspection, on all models will be carried out. Any entries found to be using counterfeit kits, non bando kits, or excluded items. Uh, that's the big one again, going back to the decals, aftermarket parts, and whatnot, will be uh, disqualified. Uh, this is extremely vague, and it just uh, opens up to interpretation of uh, the judges, which uh, they have uh, three names, and uh, a guest uh, who's a uh, cosplayer, a vampy bit me or something gives me excuse to use her picture as the thumbnail I guess uh, not too sure of her credentials in the uh, hobby though from her Google search she does do a bit of building and cosplay uh, Gundam characters but uh, yeah that just leads it up to being uh, very very confusing uh, these rules are not standard whatsoever with uh, anything else that's uh, sanctioned organized uh, even by uh, Bandai standards the English rendition of the Bandai rules are uh, very, very poorly written and very hard to uh, understand uh, from uh, the English speaking and reading uh, perspective. I'm not too sure how it translates or looks uh, in uh, Japanese. And that's a big problem using it as a standard uh, separated or put on a pedestal higher than uh, the IPMS rules that a lot of sci-fi mecha people uh, love to uh, shun when others are taking inspiration and building uh, their own rules or rewording it and rewriting it for their local community to consume uh, this is probably a good example of uh, how it can get uh, pear-shaped and uh, far more uh, difficult for people to consume design a model and enter it with either the goal to have fun or uh, compete uh, there's just uh, no communication involved and it's just extremely difficult to understand uh, even from uh, my point of view my advice would be if you're entering this competition uh, go on the Bandai Hobbynet website have a look at the 2017 uh, rules for Japan and abide by uh, those restrictions uh, modify the part about size and keep it on the whole uh, 30 by 30 by 40 uh, centimeter restriction to fit in these uh, glass cabinets uh, for uh, their event. And the second one on uh, non-official parts being used on the Gundams. And consider when they say parts, uh, that would include uh, finishing materials uh, such as uh, stickers, foils, decals all that sort of uh, thing um, if it's uh, not a Kodo wave small pack thing that you buy from uh, Japan and if it's uh, not uh, logoed with uh, Bandai all over it you're best to go completely uh, out of the box uh, finish style paint job build a bit of scribing and minimalize your uh, kit bashing uh, including cross kit bashing with uh, other Bandai kits uh, scratch building and use of uh, aftermarket parts and uh, all of that sort of stuff stay away from resin uh, that's far too confusing and uh, I would also recommend uh, avoiding movement parts 
as well as uh, LEDs and uh, that sort of uh, sound smoke uh, theories of just being a bit different. The diorama will not be judged. If it's bad, it will go against you. If it's very good, it won't help you uh, at all. So that's just a bunch of things to consider from my previous GBWC advice videos. We'll go into far more detail very shortly about uh, preparation for all the heats and competitions uh, for 2018. Stay tuned for that. Uh, now for the full questions. Question one at McConaughey. How do you prevent color bleed? I recently painted a Gundam kit where most of the plastic armor was white, but the shoulders were red. I gave the shoulders two good coats of primer, multiple coats of light gray paint, and despite all of the red from the plastic, still tinted the paint a different color than uh, where the base uh, color of the plastic was white. When uh, the plastic injection molding uh, process takes place, uh, your plastic pellets are uh, clear, colorless, and uh, dyes are added to it. There's just something in red plastic dye that uh, just contaminates paints and uh, goes through. I've uh, seen it in uh, multiple areas and uh, kits and even outside of Bandai on a Tommy kit, but uh, it just doesn't really react to uh, white well whatsoever. And it goes to the issue of that uh, hobby paints are just a very, very uh, low quality in the way of uh, pigment density and especially with whites they utilize uh, powder titanium uh, a very very expensive uh, material that uh, builds up and covers there will be an example uh, picture on the, the video that will show a low titanium and a high titanium uh, spread over uh, red and it still bleeds couple of ways uh, around this uh, you can uh, sort out for an artistic paint that has a higher uh, titanium uh, pigment density. I've uh, learned this uh, method uh, recently. I get it acrylic, highest quality uh, possible, and uh, mix a few drops of that into your uh, hobby whites and uh, greys. Uh, second uh, method number two, after uh, priming, uh, paint the surface uh, black or silver. Silver reflects uh, light very well, and due to how uh, lightly dense white pigment is, the light will bounce off the silver and the white will just appear to be uh, very very light in color but uh, silver and black uh, black underneath silver is extremely uh, dense uh, denser than other hobby colors and uh, would completely block out the red plastic changing uh, primers is also not a bad idea uh, generally Gaia note uh, mr. color Tamiya white primer it has a far heavier uh, thickness and uh, pigment density than putting a few layers of uh, color. If you have a look at uh, Mr. Color uh, base white or character white, that has a tendency of having a, a thicker uh, consistency and uh, pigment density and that could uh, give you a really good base of uh, just getting over and conquering that white or sorry the red plastic into a white finish i hope this answers your question hi i'm a man i'm trying to paint on a figure glossy black boots with my airbrush and tamir gloss black i assume you're referring to the acrylic it comes out grainy not shiny gloss black boots any tips would help. Uh, this very much sounds like uh, the acrylic Tamiya paint. Figures do not have a lot of uh, wide, very smooth uh, surfaces to work on. Uh, they tend to be a bit on the uh, bumpy and uh, rough side. So starting off uh, with those boots and just the boots, I'll polish them up starting at uh, 2000 grit sandpaper, work them up until they're uh, nice and uh, shiny on top of uh, the primer. So primer, uh, a bit of uh, polishing your mask off uh, ready to spray the boots Tamiya is not the easiest paint to uh, airbrush uh, hand applies uh, beautifully though doesn't quite react just right with its own uh, thinner and atomizes through the brush has a tendency of drying far too quickly and creating a strange orange peel 
uh, defects as well as other reactions once it lands on the surface to cure and the uh, clear resin just surfaces to the top and seals the bumpy pigments what I would do is I would uh, swap my paint out only for the black uh, everything else you're doing you seem to be very happy and uh, can go through it uh, for the black I would uh, use lacquer via uh, airbrush bl gloss black uh, spray that on let sufficient time to uh, dry polish if necessary and then a few coats of uh, gloss clear and polish that for a very deep almost military boot uh, shine if that's not an option uh, hand painting with uh, enamel gloss black and then a few coats of uh, clear and polishing that also works very well uh, that can also be uh, airbrushed though uh, use lots and lots of thinner and it's going to come out quite nicely it just seems that uh, acrylics do not seem to be the choice of uh, paint uh, through airbrush to achieve very high gloss finishes easier to do so by hand applying cl just clear gloss clear works out really well uh, but the base colors a tad of a struggle without uh, polishing if you do wish to rescue what you've already done uh, all you have to do is uh, looking back at my uh, polishing video I hit it with 2000 grit sandpaper work your way up to a higher number with uh, coats of gloss clear in between and it'll uh, come out quite uh, beautiful it's just a lot of work with how it atomizes poorly and in future uh, a more friendlier paint for that cause will do the trick nicely good day I want to start painting 3d prints from resin printer and wondering if I have a $500 budget for airbrushes should I go all-in-one for a very high-end like micron or go for free for okay quality ones I have a compressor and all the other stuff so question in short with $500 budget for an airbrush how to spend it in the best possible way I'm very happy to uh, map something out for you buddy the HS 130 or 30 which is the Hyacin gravity feed double action 0.3 millimeter nozzle airbrush retails for anywhere between online for ten dollars US up to about thirty forty dollars depending if you go to hobby shop order it online Amazon eBay Taobao seems to be the cheapest way to get it with a bit of time um, waiting for it to arrive you could easily for under a hundred dollars uh, get a whole uh, handful of these if you make a mistake damage a part lose a part there's more there for backup and you can uh, modify and change them around changing needles nozzles and they can perform a variety of uh, different uh, uses and uh, jobs you'll never have um, all your airbrushes out of commission one could be a maintenance one in use where with only one really good airbrush if anything per se was to go wrong uh, you're out of commission and you can't be spraying for a period of time the parts that you do eventually have to replace are the needles and nozzles they retail around one to two US uh, dollars again off uh, Taobao, eBay, Amazon all those uh, websites are uh, direct from China with a bit of a uh, weight in shipping I suggest uh, getting a whole handful of uh, each size or with the 0 0.3 uh, get a large cluster of them you'll uh, damage them early later on in your career you'll be going uh, through them a lot less uh, frequently and they last for uh, quite a while for the expensive models it's uh, 10 20 dollars uh, US uh, per change of uh, part and shipping and all that uh, jazz the beautiful thing with each airbrush you can hook one up with a 0 0.2 millimeter needle and nozzle uh, do fine lines work all that sort of thing and have another one set up for 0 0.5 uh, put your micro filler your clear coats your primer through all that uh, sort of thing and it just our uh, base coats a lot easier without uh, changing the uh, parts out what a lot of people do not realize when they get into airbrushing Gundam or anything uh, besides the initial cost of the compressor and the airbrush which is very expensive you've already got a compressor 
there's a lot of accessories and extra parts that will make the job really handy, uh, quicken up the job, or just are uh, convenient to the point where it's uh, more fun and not so much a chore. A cleaning pot with a stand, or just an airbrush stand that can hold uh, multiple airbrushes makes loading and cleaning so much easier instead of one hand to hold and the other hand to do all the other jobs. Hand 3 just makes it uh, really ideal so you're not spilling and causing messes, all that. One of these is uh, definitely uh, ideal. This little uh, gadget is a water filter, uh, again found on eBay, Amazon, all those places, very very cheap. It's a uh, 1 8 uh, inch thread, you add it under your airbrush and then you attach your hose. You will need adapters depending on what sort of uh, compressor you have as well as a regulator. You've got to make sure all the threads uh, meet up. Common thread is uh, 1 8 for all your airbrush stuff and depending if your uh, output is 1 8 1 4 or half inch you'll need to convert that to 1 8 to attach the hose to attach it to the airbrush. This little water trap is really good for capturing anything that goes down the water line, vapor, whatnot, from um, bringing all the air, compressing it, getting the solids out. That will not land in your paintwork, and you don't have to worry about any impurities and imperfections on your uh, paintwork. Multi-port uh, output seems to be very handy. You can have multiple airbrushes uh, going on at once. You can load each airbrush with a color. Spray, spray, spray. When you're done, you empty all the different paints and uh, do a big uh, cleanup. Uh, that way you're not constantly swapping uh, paint from the single same airbrush and multiple colors. Uh, this is an approach that uh, professional artists and people who work on uh, car bodies and that sort of thing do. Other costs people never consider is how do you mount your parts your consumables, your masking tapes, your masking fluids, all the consumable fluids, the retardants, the thinners, all that sort of stuff really builds up without expecting it uh, whatsoever. Getting some corrugated cardboard, skewers and alligator clips or pre-made uh, alligator clips, a few hundred of them, uh, that surprisingly sets you back a bit and uh, just buy a few of those things I've rattled off is well over a hundred dollars and uh, you don't have to build up to that you can just buy it outright. If you wish to be in comfort and I know I really enjoy it spray indoors and pick it up and put it down whenever you want instead of uh, packing up outside. Spray booth goes a long way to get those uh, nasty fumes out of your uh, room into the uh, outside world through a window and make sure you got ample uh, filters and change them quite regularly. The particular model that's pictured on this uh, video is a cheap carry case uh, one from China. Very very efficient. You can buy them cheap from eBay or Amazon for about uh, under a hundred dollars. Uh, that would be the way to go over some of the fixed name brand stuff. If you must have a premium very nice airbrush to apply the finest lines or some nice gradient shading or whatnot. Uh, do a little research. There's a lot of uh, brands from Badger to Iwata to Sterner and Hardback. Depending on where you're located and what you can source locally cheap or closely manufactured to your uh, residence and uh, ship to you, you can uh, get a nice 0.2 mil uh, airbrush and uh, use that uh, sparingly for special effects and then you've got all of your other um, cheaper airbrushes that are workhorses and do the bulk of the work and the colouring in and some of the nasty stuff like spray putty or primer and top coats and all of uh, that sort of uh, jazz. They're not too bad if you source locally. You can get them for a little less, a little more than $100 with uh, shipping as long as you stay away from a hobby shop and go online. In uh, conclusion to all this, a bit of a quote uh, from evil dictator Joseph Stalin, there is a quality in mass quantity. Or at least from my uh, translation, a tactic in quantity over quality. Hey Alan, I'm jumping out of straight building and diving into custom building Gunpla. The only part I'm struggling with is scribing. Uh, to be more specific, designs. 
is there any rules or things to keep in mind when making panel lines? So far, I have only been copying designs from other people, but I want to eventually make my very own. I love your channel and hope you continue making content, my dude. Thanks. Thank you, Noel, for the very, very nice comment. For the last couple of Gunpla Builder World Cups heats in uh, Sydney, during the uh, panels, I was able to uh, see Josh Dara talk about uh, his points and designs in scribing, as well as afterwards uh, picking his uh, brain. So he's uh, got some very interesting ideas, which is uh, far better uh, well explained than uh, I could uh, possibly tackle the issue. I think it was in 2015 he made this uh, really wonderful uh, Sinanju by uh, cutting panels and uh, doing a lot of the scribing. Uh, the trick is in uh, cutting panels to the parts that join so there's a large gap and you can see a bit inside with the uh, mechanical detail and uh, whatnot. His uh, big inspiration was doing a lot of uh, research in real life uh, machinery, uh, mostly aircraft, where they have a lot of uh, panel and armour and whatnot, and they have to be very regularly uh, disassembled, uh, manufactured, put back together, and get access underneath to uh, repair, do inspections, and just uh, daily serviceable things before the uh, aircraft would uh, take off and take a load of people or go really fast or do combat mission type uh, things just like a Gundam so after collecting a lot of uh, pictures and examples of uh, real life he would uh, go back to the Gundam model that he's building out uh, have a good study of each part and component and imagine how an engineer or a crew would pull that component apart to get to the inside to do their repairs working and whatnot will it be a hatch or will the two armor halves be uh, pulled apart and how many parts would it be pulled apart uh, for ease in the environment that it's uh, doing the jobs. He would uh, draw it out, have a good study, take a photo, look at a few angles and draw it uh, multiple times in line art as well as with a marker directly on the part until he sees something he really likes and when it's quite cool he starts uh, scribing away. And uh, this process of design does take a while for him. Uh, other people get instant uh, inspiration and just hack it straight away. I'd imagine many other do a similar process. Hi, can you please tell me how to use the Tamiya Retarder? What is the amount to use? Maybe 50-50 with Tamiya acrylic paint? Thank you. Just for those who don't know, uh, retardant is a medium used in paint and it slows down the uh, process or the curing process. This is an advantage in self-leveling uh, the paint and achieving uh, certain finishes that's more uh, revolved around um, gloss clears and uh, allowing what happens underneath the finish to protrude through. Uh, other times you want uh, finishes to dry faster so you can handle it and touch it where you would uh, utilize a, a quicken or a drying medium uh, more so for hobby especially for people achieving a gloss clear or uh, an overall uh, gloss mirror finish uh, retardant is the preferred choice the Tamiya paint retardant is very powerful potent and uh, strong only uh, tiny quantities is used uh, per um, palette or or airbrush cup the amount I like to start off with, um, I use an eyedropper and uh, for a tiny palette amount, probably two, three drops. For a half or two thirds full cup in a standard um, HS or airbrush, Delta Hyacinth Iwata, about five uh, drops. If I'm going for a very high gloss uh, sheen, I would uh, double it, though 50-50, uh, I would imagine the paint would probably never uh, dry and uh, that is uh, quite overly strong. Um, only uh, drop it at a time for a large quantity or if we were to uh, put it in some sort of uh, parts you would go one part uh, paint retardant to about uh, 20 or 50 parts paint 
to just just start off with and fill out and then you add more and uh, more to the desired effect from your experience from the last time using start with less less is always better with uh, retardants too much and uh, the worst case scenario is the finish will remain uh, sticky it'll attract uh, dust and dirt uh, never fully cure and uh, look uh, quite uh, ugly next is long-term supporter of the channel Samuel will decal adhesive change the shade or tone of paint color will it make the area look different from the rest if added in excess keep up the great videos always very informative uh, thank you very much Samuel just for those who don't know decal setter uh, generally has a tendency of uh, once applied levels out thins and flattens the decal to the surface uh, devil decal fix or adhesive is a glue to help uh, stick the glue down to the surface so you have a tendency of uh, applying the decal fix first uh, putting your decal uh, over it if it has trouble sticking or staying in the same place and then the decal setter to uh, thin it all out uh, from my experience I don't use decal sets a lot a lot of the decals I use are very new recent um, very very tiny and the pliers over areas uh, sufficiently enough after a period of time uh, waiting this is more visually noticeable on acrylic surfaces uh, the best way to get around this is to make sure the paint is completely dry matured and hardened you put a, a clear gloss coat uh, allow maximum ease for the decal to slide around and so the adhesion also doesn't uh, catch on uh, detail as well as um, the matted uh, surface of uh, a rougher finish and uh, decal adhesion uh, works best on much larger decals on uh, very large not so detailed uh, surfaces where um, it struggles to stick due to um, it being overly too smooth and uh, the decal age just uh, not uh, operating as efficiently as you would desire especially if you handle a decal a lot and you slide it around touch with your hands move it around uh, the more it's been in the water and the more you move a decal this is more visually noticeable on acrylic surfaces uh, the best way to get around this is to make sure the paint is completely dry matured and hardened you put a, a clear gloss coat uh, allow maximum ease for the decal to slide around and so the adhesion also doesn't uh, catch on uh, detail as well as um, the matted uh, surface of uh, a rougher finish and uh, decal adhesion uh, works best on much larger decals on uh, very large not so detailed uh, surfaces where um, it struggles to stick due to um, it being overly too smooth and uh, the decal age just uh, not uh, operating as efficiently as you would desire especially if you handle a decal a lot and you slide it around touch with your hands move it around uh, the more it's been in the water and the more you move a decal the more trouble you'll have with sticking and especially with large decals I find that I'm fearful of uh, masking over a decal as I may potentially lift it uh, the use of uh, decal fix would uh, make sure that uh, it's uh, definitely cemented among the sandwich of uh, the painted surface and the clear coat that uh, goes on top it does affect the paint and it can affect some paints and surfaces overall it is a solvent uh, use as little as uh, humanly uh, possible and make sure you've given the maximum amount of time for the paints to mature dry and harden final question from Tim been a long time since my last question nevertheless always watching and liking my questions are to you how do you clean up panel lines after rescribing them no matter what I do I tend to leave uh, plastic shaving particles in the line whenever I try to go back in the line I either make new shavings or use the back side of the chisel a BMC a bunch of sizes it seems I stir up new shavings hello Tim thank you very much uh, for your support and the kind uh, comment I'll get straight into it 
BMC is very, very uh, sharp, uh, laser sharp. And uh, what's happening is it's uh, taking off uh, microns of uh, material as it slides up and down the uh, panels. So what you generally uh, need to do, or when I do my panel lining, um, I don't use chisels a lot, just uh, the old uh, trumpeter hooker paneler. I do it wet, so I splash water onto the surface, dip my tool in water when I scribe, and uh, the water and the dust uh, turns into almost like a, a putty or uh, a slurry and that uh, just flows through the uh, panel leaving a lot less uh, debris and if there's anything else that's uh, left over I uh, wipe it down with a bit of tissue and I run a toothpick down the uh, panel it's a uh, very soft uh, wood it's uh, softer than uh, plastic so it's not going to leave any scratches or shavings like uh, re-putting the chi chisel in which uh, may potentially scratch the walls as we are dealing with uh, microns of uh, material it uh, just uh, pushes out and it would actually cause more damage and distortion to uh, the tip of the wood than any sort of plastic and remove uh, all the material. Uh, the water takes away any uh, dust and anything left over. Uh, wipe down the chisel tips as uh, they are steel and likely to rust uh, quite uh, quickly. Though as I've been uh, wet scribing of uh, recently, it's just a beautiful lubricant. It doesn't get caught on uh, anything and uh, scribing is just such a more easier uh, task. Also, when there are two higher surfaces with a lower surface in between, sort of like uh, two hills and a gully, a cut through example upside down. I've got a rough idea. And I want to scribe two panel lines in between uh, my lines. Sometimes have uh, dents in the lower sections of the, of the three surfaces. I hope this makes sense. Almost if there were uh, bumps in the higher edges, which I use as a guide. Any idea how to solve this uh, issue? This one's a bit complex, so please bear with us. We pretty much have a channel, a lower area of uh, plastic with uh, two raised areas. And inside that channel, uh, Tim wishes to have uh, more detail. Very straight, nice, uh, perfect lines. And what he's doing is he's scribing in at an angle by leaning the uh, chisel along uh, the corner of uh, the raised bit. And as he's uh, chiseling along, he's getting little bumps and dents uh, from the uh, coarse uh, metal of uh, the BMC chisel into the softer, uh, weaker plastic. So the raised corners has uh, little imperfections and uh, damage uh, to get those uh, fine lines. If that happens to be the case, and my translation is uh, correct, uh, probably one of the easiest things to do is uh, cover the chisel in something like masking tape or electrical tape so it's softer than the uh, plastic from impact. Other ideas I'm thinking about is you measure out uh, the channel, uh, cut out a half a mil styrene to the shape, uh, re-detail it and uh, chisel on it and whatnot and insert it into that little channel. Uh, if that becomes too flush with the higher surface, then you can uh, bulk that up with uh, styrene as well and sand it all down uh, later to uh, bevel the uh, edges. Another thing is, is underneath the part, if there's uh, nothing uh, protruding, you can uh, drill a series of uh, half or quarter mil uh, holes at the edge of each side of the channel, uh, cut out the part, clean it up, Scribe your channels out, uh, stick it in, support a little uh, styrene plate underneath, and that will give some really interesting armor removing uh, detail as well as uh, panels. It could be a little too much work for that detail. Let me know if I've hit it on the head or gone on a completely uh, different uh, tangent. Uh, maybe uh, take a photo and uh, forward it in, and we can have a bit of a more of a talk and. Uh, look in on uh, Facebook or something but uh, they're just uh, some rough ideas uh, how I would uh, roughly uh, wrap my head around something like that keep up the great work uh, not commenting much these days as I watch YouTube on a console and due to my crappy phone I am not able to get a app for that uh, weird barcode thing in order to write a comment nevertheless 
and never miss an episode, nor forget to leave a like. Cheers, Tim. Thank you very, very much, Tim. Your support is very, very much appreciated. Uh, a lot of us uh, older YouTubers have accepted that uh, times and things are changing. We have uh, lost our forums of our old, and people are leaving the uh, desktop and laptop computers and got uh, consoles and phones and whatnot. And realistically, the uh, YouTube app is uh, absolutely uh, useless and playing around on some other uh, devices. Uh, interacting beyond uh, just uh, watching is uh, near uh, impossible. And it's uh, something a lot of us uh, creators are uh, attempting uh, to deal with. Though we all know that you guys are watching, liking, it is uh, much appreciated and the times when there is uh, interaction with uh, comments and helping people out and stuff, you've uh, got far more chances in this day and age of uh, getting in the attention of a YouTuber than you have in the uh, past. So it is something to take advantage of once you do jump on a desktop computer. I intend to keep going on with my uh, projects and content and video. It's uh, The game is still very, very fun for me. Uh, there are some very big projects uh, coming up in the horizon. Uh, lots going to be uh, announced. There will be a big video once uh, a few conditions are met. Uh, we'll be uh, release, outlining and explaining everything that's going to happen in the future and how uh, many things will stay the same, but some big changes are just going to enhance uh, the experience uh, that's done here through my uh, channel and uh, works. I do sincerely hope you guys will love it. These have been some uh, very, very awesome questions. Thank you for everyone who took the time to check out the asking video, contributing, as well as uh, watching uh, this far. Uh, those who asked the questions, I hope you helped out and everything's uh, worked out. We do have the uh, McConaughey Facebook uh, group, uh, the study group, uh, for further discussion and posting of videos, dissecting and figuring things out. We'll uh, slowly uh, work out how this uh, group uh, can be useful just um, on the side things to cherry pick and use when uh, useful, not necessarily a permanent place to hang out. I've got uh, a few things on the side. At the moment, I'm helping uh, Model Icon and good friend uh, Daryl Weems set up his uh, new shop. He's uh, been in the industry for about uh, 20 odd years working at uh, some very iconic hobby shops in Melbourne and is uh, recognizable to most. The joint is called uh, Gundams Plus. It's uh, located in Camberwell, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, very easy uh, to get access to. This guy really knows his stuff and it's being set up a bit like a building a cafe, a hangout joint that you can uh, buy kits and uh, whatnot. Uh, launch is on Saturday. Our Facebook page is in the description uh, below so you can check it out. There's a big um, thing going on. So if you happen to be in Melbourne this weekend, it's a modeling event that's uh, very, very worthwhile uh, checking out. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. We'll catch you guys later. Stay tuned for more. And we're always uh, uploading videos, one to two to be exact. And there's further uh, bits and pieces and sources on the Facebook page. Make sure to check that out as it's not always on your feed.